Shalom. Once again, I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Hashem, Makakodash. Double honor to Apostle Elizabeth Mastone Ruel. Salutation to you, sincere Akim, and the four coins of Arab, and sincere in truth. True names of our power, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, And by now, you so called Negroes, Hispanic, and Native Indians should know that you're true children of Israel. According to the Holy Scriptures of the Bible that's written for you, and according to the historical facts that I prove that you are, and to our confusion of faces that look like the heathen nations. We'll go back to the lineage of our four parents, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the true descendants of Israel. Shalom to you also. You know, um, a America once again, man, Babylon, man, place of confusion, the place of destruction, man, the place that is marked for destruction, man. Hey, Mosai, Yah Bashem Yah Shai, Ratzal, man, that the microchip becomes uh, mandatory very soon, you know, and you know these. Uh, all right, this is um Job chapter twenty and five. It says, so I can't. It says, Knowest thou not this of all since man was placed on upon earth, that the triumph of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Alright. And you can see, man, the policies of the so called white man Esau Edom, alright. Better to uh, the better to know today is the whites, white people in the Caucasians. All right, cave dwellers. They constantly exercise, you know, these unrighteous decrees, man. All right, the the sodomites, uh, LGBTQ, whatever, uh, you know, homosexuality uh, above, you know, other unrighteous decrees that they push, man, and that's part of the signs of this man's kingdom. All right. Um, that Revelation 11 and 8, you know, liken it to, to spiritual Egypt and Sodom, all right? The question of whether parents should have the authority to uh, give their young children hormone-altering drugs is once again in the spotlight. Now, this is after a jury in Texas ruled against a father who was trying to stop his ex-wife's attempts to give their, give their drugs to their seven-year-old son. RT's Rachel Blevins joins us with the details of this case. Texas officials have confirmed that they will investigate the case of a young boy whose mother wants to give him hormone-altering drugs at the age of seven because she believes he is actually a girl. The case of James Younger drew national attention when a bitter custody battle broke out over his mother's attempts to change his gender and her pursuit of a legal decision that would force the father to comply with referring to his son as a girl named Luna. That request was granted by a jury in Texas, which gave sole managing conservatorship to the mother, allowing her to move forward with plans to turn James into Luna permanently. But while the transition may start with the child wearing pink dresses and using the girl's restroom at school, it will go on to include chemical castration and hormone replacement therapy, and it has sparked the question of whether a seven-year-old is ready to make a decision that will impact the rest of his life. The father has also argued that James does not present the symptoms of gender dysphoria because he only wants to be called Luna when he is with his mom and he insists he is a boy when he is with his dad. Now the case has caught the attention of Texas Governor Greg Abbott, who said it is being looked at by the Texas Attorney General's Office and the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Current laws in Texas do not prohibit parents or legal guardians from giving minors hormone-altering drugs such as puberty blockers. But some state lawmakers are now calling for a change. Republican State Representative Matt Krause promised to introduce legislation that would prohibit the use of puberty blockers on all children under the age of 18. Such laws could impact cases involving older children, such as one in Canada where a court ruled in favor of a 14-year-old whose father was trying to stop the child's transition from female 
female to male. The case in Texas has also sparked an outcry online and a petition on change.org seeking to quote save the child from chemical castration has received more than 222,000 signatures and counting. The child's father has the option to appeal the court's decision but the lengthy legal battle could take months and it could go long beyond the time James hits puberty and is eligible for life-changing drugs. In Washington, Rachel Blevins, RT. You know, I want to look more into this from a legal and media side, so we bring in our analyst, Lionel. Thank you so much for joining us on this story. Thank you. Okay, so first, does this case have any national precedent? Is this just something new that we're hearing about in 2019? This is a case of, as we say, first impression. It does not have precedent like an appellate case does, but it has a tremendous impact. It will be watched, and it will be very, very um, uh, influential later on in other courts. But it does not have precedent like Roe against Wade or something like that. Well, and what I have to wonder, is this a case about uh, not necessarily gender identity, but is this also parental rights, mother versus father, and this erring on the side of the mother uh, rather than giving the father equal opportunity to represent their child? Many, many issues. First of all, parental rights, parental autonomy, tender years doctrine, which is something which people have found out about. When a child is of a certain age, courts have always shown a preference to go with what the mother would want. And also, Scotty, this has been dealt with involving religion, circumcisions, of vaccines, a lot of things which are medical, legal. So this particular subject matter may be new, the issues themselves are heard all the times, but in different areas. Well, it's interesting that you bring up medical intervention. You say this is parallel to that. In what ways do you kind of put the see the same characteristics? Well, here we have right now, the mother is going to be saying, I am not looking for chemical castration, which is a term they, they do not particularly care for, any type of hormone changing. I'm merely trying to have this child, Luna, James, uh, assigned or uh, referred to as Luna, I merely am trying to have his or now her identity acknowledged by the father. Later on, and this is what the father is arguing, that some of the experts that the mother has used said later on, it may indeed, because now it's a, it's a bit early, it may indeed involve more of an intrusive, if you will, hormonal type of intervention. So, but for the time being, the mother says, I just want identity to be considered, that's all. Well, and I wonder when the child does turn 18, if not only he decides that he would like to keep with his natural birth gender, if he could go back on the mother, but more importantly, could he go back on the court saying, you took my voice away and gave basically my mother the option without giving me the choice. You should have at least said you can make this decision when you're 18 happens all the time. I'll tell you one where it happens, which in, in a different situation. How about the case where a child is damaged or injured by a physician? And the parents like the physician and waive any kind of medical malpractice. Later on, the child said, you, you could have sued on my behalf, and you didn't. What's interesting, though, Scotty, is let me just say, this is a jury trial. You should also look at the background. This is acrimony. This is ex-husband and wife. This has a lot of, as most people would know, all of the, uh, the earmarks of family court. This is a very contentious case and goes way back. It's very odd also, if, compared to most jurisdictions, where a jury gets to hear this. The judge has the ultimate decision whether to go along with the jury's decision, which, by the way, doesn't really order castration, chemical castration, or, or whatever you want to call it, but you also have now the governor who says, either way, I'm going to intervene, I'm going to have protective services look at this, so you're going to have this at the court level, parental level, regulatory level, state level, governmental level. This is going to be monumental in terms of its impact around the country. You know, you're absolutely right about that because you're dealing with a jury, number one, which to me seems very, very odd. But you don't know the backstory. Obviously, the marriage did not go well, and sometimes kids are put in no. between. This even opens up another element. The child literally is becoming in between. It. Real quick, can the state of Texas actually legally intervene or do other? Is this going to be, become a federal choice at some point? Oh, absolutely, because the, the, the state can act in local parentis, in the place of a parent, and the overwhelming 
absolute overreaching or, or the, the writing uh, determination is going to be what is in the best interest for the child. How do you balance the equities? But if you have, for example, in the case of a parent who thinks that medical, let's say, treatment should be withheld in the case of diabetes or surgery, the states have always intervened. So it's going to be a matter of what the experts say and how the issue is categorized. It's going to be fascinating. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because even though this just might be the first, we know there's going to be lots more that come along and follow this precedent. Thank you so much, Lionel, for diving in. Thank you. It's hard to clear through the debris and get right down to the nitty gritty that is real news. New details are coming to light in the case of Jeffrey Epstein. As more read between the two year treasury yield and the 10 year treasury yield, several hundred students are staging a sit in. The Amazon rainforest and the blame game is underway. It's time for RT America. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button.